Hello, it's Roman Yuper from Viacode Consulting speaking, and we are ready to start our webinar. So first of all, welcome to our first webinar that we are hosting for our MPVT community, and welcome to the SQL Database Monitoring Introduction Webinar. Today, we are going to present information about the options that you have to monitor the SQL databases for various deployments, including Linux deployment, SQL Azure database, and so on. And uh, it will allow you to uh, learn about these options. And of course, it's just the beginning. This is the first webinar in the series about monitoring and database management. So uh, please feel free to leave your feedback when we uh, share the feedback story after this webinar. Uh, and tell us what you want to learn about monitoring, database monitoring and database management from us. So let's begin. Let me introduce ourselves first. Uh, my name is uh, Roman Yuffer, but the main host, the main speaker on this event is Alexander Andrushenko, our principal DevOps. Uh, he's uh, actually one of creators of many monitoring solutions for SQL database. Uh, he's uh, our own uh, SQL database and database in general monitoring expert. And he already delivered sessions about database monitoring and cloud and data center management on many conferences. My name is Roman Yusuf and I am practice leader in DevOps uh, direction at Viacode. Uh, I'm Alex Peer and we are working on many monitoring solutions together. Uh, let's start with a bit of housekeeping, some ground rules for this webinar. We are expecting that this webinar will take not more than 60 minutes, and we will have some time to talk about questions and answers. Uh, the recording of the webinar and all the slides will be available for you after the webinar. Uh, if you have any questions over the webinar, you can pay attention that chat capabilities and your microphones are disabled and it will stay disabled over the webinar. But you can find the Q&A tab in the left uh, bottom corner of your Skype for Business client and you can use it to send any questions to us. I will collect these questions over the webinar and we will try to answer as many questions as possible at the end of the webinar. If we, by some reason, uh, can't answer all the questions that we have. Of course, we will uh, answer it offline and share with you uh, after the webinar. Uh, if you want to learn more about further webinars that we go into host and any updates from us, just follow us on Twitter and stay connected for updates from Vice Consult. And we are ready to start. Our webinar is going to consist of two main parts. And I really don't want to, uh, uh, that it's better to start because we have a bunch of tools to review today and to show it to you. But I think we will start with uh, just overview of the tools that we're going to demonstrate you today. And then Alex will do a deep dive and some demos of the tools that, uh, that I'm going to introduce you. Uh, we will start with uh, with one of the most popular tools that we uh, you know, that we that, that we have on the market, talking about Microsoft uh, oriented data center, and I think for you as the members of the MPVT community, it's not a surprise that we will start with the Storm. Uh, it's more than popular IT monitoring platform that literally can monitor anything with a, of course with a proper customization and tuning. This tool is highly appreciated by IT operations, uh, and I hope as well as DBA. Uh, and as I, as, as I already said, fortunately, we don't need to even to ask you uh, if you have any experience with Storm, because as I see, we're all members of MPVT community. It means that we, uh, everyone of you are using Storm and we don't have to spend time today to start with uh, some storm uh, basis. So we can move on exactly to a point and start talking about storm capabilities that you can use to monitor SQL database. 
and uh, let's start with with overview of the option. So using SCOM as a platform and uh, a variety of the management packs available for SCOM, we can monitor Microsoft SQL Server, of course, on-premise deployment. We can monitor Microsoft SQL Server on Linux deployment, as well as two options of the uh, cloud deployment, Azure SQL Database and uh, one of the, I think, newest uh, options for the database, SQL Managed Instance in Azure. And uh, Alex, uh, over the demonstration, he will give you some more details about SQL managed and the instance, if you never ever used it before, uh, you may have a chance to learn about it from Alex. So uh, let's uh, let's see what other options do we have besides uh, uh, besides monitoring of the SQL server. Uh, using uh, other management parts that are available, you can monitor not just the SQL server database engine. You can monitor also uh, BI services, such as analysis services, reporting services, replication, mirroring, all its own. So some, uh, some other services, and as well as all the uh, multi-node configurations that are available right now. You just need to import the proper management parts and enable monitoring uh, for particular service. Uh, let's move on. So because, uh, as, as I said, my part is mostly introduce the number of tools, and then Alex will do a review and demo of those tools. So uh, the next tool that we have is it's actually Azure Services. And uh, needless to say that Microsoft Azure platform uh, and portal right now provides uh, a wide variety of different uh, management services that allows you to manage uh, Microsoft Azure infrastructure as well as some on-premise services, on-premise products from Microsoft and third-party vendors. And one of the, I think, most uh, available tools that you uh, that you can use is Azure Monitor. Azure Monitor is an uh, embedded part of the uh, Azure portal that you can use, as I said, for uh, almost any any service at uh, at Microsoft Azure, and it allows you to monitor Azure SQL database, of course, uh, as well as Azure Analysis Service, Azure Data Warehouse, and SQL Managed Instance. The next tool that we're going to review today is Azure Log Analytics. Uh, it's still called OMS, but Azure Log Analytics is kind of a new uh, new name that is. Uh, more popular and is, is going to be used uh, in the future. Uh, I hope you all uh, you already had a chance to take a look to this tool. If no, we will uh, we'll give you an other review today. And it provides two options for monitor. First of all, it allows you to monitor Microsoft SQL Server with a SQL assessment solution. And it also allows you to monitor Azure SQL database uh, with Azure SQL Analytics solution. And here's, a, I think, uh, that's all talking about uh, sophisticated and uh, powerful tools for monitor, uh, Microsoft SQL Server, but uh, last and not least, the tool uh, is called DP Check. Uh, it means best practice check. This is ex actually not a tool uh, because it's a, it's a set of CSQL script that, can, that you can download from GitHub. It's created by Microsoft and it's supported by Microsoft. That's very important. Uh, and uh, it's an, this project is not just a set of tools that uh, was, was published to GitHub and just depended there. No, it's constantly updating to support new versions, all the new features, and all the new deployments. And you can easily download it and used to monitor your SQL Server deployment. You can uh, get many different metrics uh, to uh, receive information about processor usage, memory, uh, IO, about database health, and many, many other things. So this tool is not so friendly and easy to use as Azure Managed Services or Operations or SQL Server or System Center uh, Operations Manager, 
but it's extremely powerful. And it definitely could be a last resort if by some reason other monitoring tools that you are using right now, for example, or that you're going to use, are failing. And you may have may need some backup option. In that case, having these uh, those scripts is somewhere on your computer will come to handy to save the day and keep your SQL Server infrastructure monitored even if all the monitoring tools that you have are failing by some reason. And it's actually a very interesting tool uh, to build on top of that some automation that will allow you, for example, to run those scripts uh, regularly on a regular basis and send the information from those scripts to some system for visualization, for other things, for something like that. It's, it's up to you. This is a very interesting tool to use. Uh, so let's just recapture what we just uh, what we just reviewed. We have three major options from Microsoft to monitor Microsoft SQL Server and uh, SQL databases. First is System Center Operations Manager and set of management parts, including Microsoft SQL Server management parts that support monitoring for SQL Server on Windows and on Linux. Monitoring for analysis service, reporting services, and multi-node configurations such as mirroring, replication, and always on availability groups. For SCOM, there is also Azure Database Management Park that allows you to monitor Azure database, SQL Azure databases using your SCOM deployed in on-premises or on virtual machine in Microsoft Azure. Uh, if you are using Microsoft Azure as your management tool and management console, you can use Azure Monitor to monitor your Azure SQL database, as well as you can use Azure, Azure Log Analytics to monitor uh, uh, SQL Server, uh, uh, SQL Azure data, and a SQL Azure database. And of course, the BP Check, the GitHub project created and supported by Microsoft, is your last resort and backup option, as well as very good foundation for any. Uh, custom monitoring that you uh, that you want to create. And of course, we shouldn't forget about third party tools that many people are using right now. It is SQL Sentry, SolarWinds, HP, OpenView, RedGate, and many others. We are not going to talk about those tools today, but it does mean that they are not exist and they are not good tools. Uh, today, we are focusing on tools that you can get free or almost free from Microsoft especially if you already, for example, have a license for Microsoft System Center, and if you're building your data center management using the Microsoft Management Infrastructure. So now we know our options, and we, uh, we understand what monitoring tools we're going to review today. And it, it's just time to move to the second part, the second chapter of our presentation today, and learn how are we going to use this tool? How we can use this tool? And it means that this is actually the best part of any presentation, best part of any session online or on any conference. This is a demo time, and this demo is going to be delivered by Alexander Andrushenko. Yeah, thank you, Rowan. My first demo will be about SQL Server Management Packs. My environment is pre-configured and I assume that all people here are familiar with SCOM, so I'm going to skip Management Pack import part. As you could see, I have a number of SQL Server Management Packs imported on this environment. Usually, uh, when SQL Server Management Pack is imported, in most cases it uh, should start work automatically. It has out-of-the-box experience. Uh, of course, it's true if you have uh, proper um, uh, RNS profile configuration, uh, like local system. Um, if not, then you need to do some configuration and grant appropriate permissions. On my environment, I have uh, a number of uh, agent-managed computers, and each computer, each server has some SQL Server role deployed. Uh, at the very first moment, management pack is distributed to all these agents and uh, starts the discovery process. Uh, all the presentation for SQL Server uh, starting in 2005 
to 2016 are located in Microsoft SQL Server uh, folder. And it also includes Azure SQL uh, DB Management Pack presentation. For uh, SQL Server 2017 and upper version, there is a dedicated folder. After initial discovery process is completed, the first thing you will see is the discovered computers, and each computer has some SQL Server role. There is a special view, uh, SQL Server role, that uh, uh, help you understand what instances uh, of which type discovered. For example, here I have uh, integration services, reporting services, DB engines, uh, analysis services. I can view properties and other useful information about uh, uh, instance uh, and uh, it also helped me uh, understand configuration of the instance. I want to say that SQL Server Management Pack is focused on the operational monitoring scenarios like configuration, mobility, performance and uh, performance and even data collection uh, and alerting on top of all these data. So basically, uh, SQL Server Management Packs, it's not something that could uh, replace uh, SQL Server Management Studio or SQL Profiler during uh, issue troubleshooting. It's focused on such scenarios like uh, lack of free space, high, high CPU, or high memory utilization, uh, or it could alert if uh, your DB Engine Windows service is not running or you have uh, deadlock uh, in your database. Uh, so let's check what is available and I am going to open Health Explorer. Uh, Health Explorer is a tool that shows a uh, health state of uh, or your SQL instance and uh, or any other uh, object. Uh, in our example, it's SQL. Uh, and you can see uh, uh, mobility configuration and performance uh, health aspects. Uh, you also can find uh, what is the name of instance for right from here. It's uh, um, default instance. Um, uh, all uh, notice that we have in Health Explorer represent a monitor that can have a healthy state, green or unhealthy, yellow or red state. So. Uh, uh, on the right uh, hand side, we have a uh, uh, knowledge uh, base that explains uh, what's going on and how to resolve the issue. Uh, so there are a lot of monitors, uh, part of them located on uh, SQL instance, part of them located on uh, child objects like uh, um, this monitor located on uh, DB file. So there are multiple monitors on different levels. And as I said before, uh, part of them focused on performance, part on uh, availability. So we can see from this monitor that uh, Windows service is running and there are some configuration monitors. Uh, for example, this one checks uh, service principal name configuration. So from uh, almost any place uh, you can navigate to some other useful views uh, like performance view performance view shows you all the metrics uh, collected for your instance and its child objects there are more than 100 metrics uh, available in sql server management parks also you have ability to uh, open diagram view and see how uh, your objects connected uh, to each other. So on DB Engine, we have a number of uh, databases and uh, um, SQL agent. And you also can drill down and uh, see uh, health of uh, a file group and individual file. Uh, now I want to uh, say uh, that uh, uh, you are not limited to this default use. Uh, we have uh, my favorite feature of uh, the SQL Server Management Park. It's a data center summary dashboard. Uh, it shows aggregated health state of uh, your enterprise rolled up to a couple of tiles. 
uh, if you uh, uh, look, now uh, we have uh, uh, one tile for each category, uh, for each uh, uh, server role, like SQL instance, uh, uh, like uh, reporting, analysis, mirroring, co-zone, replication, and uh, even Azure SQL uh, database can be found here. If you uh, see that uh, something is uh, unhealthy for your instance, you may expand it and see aggregated uh, uh, health state. So these tiles represent monitors and this is aggregated uh, performance information. Uh, you're also not limited to this default view. You can uh, easily uh, remove, uh, edit and uh, add new tiles uh, if you like. But what if I want to see uh, in detail what's going on? I can double click on tile and drill down to the next level and view individual SQL instances health. On the left hand side, I have instance details and uh, properties uh, that help me identify uh, what instance I am working with. Uh, and the bottom I have uh, alerts that shows me uh, some useful information. Uh, and also I can have a knowledge. On the right hand side, I have a, a dashboard that shows me uh, health and uh, performance aspects. So cubes uh, represent monitors and uh, blue uh, tiles represent performance data and we have combination of monitor and metric on uh, tiles like uh, this screen. You're also not limited to what you see. Uh, you can uh, easily customize it uh, from here. You can add or you can remove it. And it's important to know that uh, uh, this dashboard shows you uh, by default data over the last date and you can uh, see. Uh, so it's kind of snapshot. Health information is a snapshot. It's last value and for performance it's last day or you can change it. Also from uh, uh, this view again, uh, when I selected some object, I can jump to all the standard views. Another interesting capability is uh, related objects uh, state tile that uh, shows aggregated health state of all child objects. So I can double click and go to the next layer and go to the next layer until I found uh, who is a source of uh, unhealthy state. For example, this file is running out of space and we have this uh, uh, monitor that shows that uh, this DB file is uh, running out of space. Uh, uh, as I uh, mentioned uh, before, SQL management pack consists of a number of uh, role specific management packs like uh, uh, SSRS or SSIS management pack uh, or replication. And if you want to monitor them, you need to import corresponding management pack. And you can find uh, uh, views uh, for this uh, server roles, not only on summary dashboard, but also at the bottom, there is a uh, role specific uh, uh, views and folders uh, that you can use. Uh, so this was a short demo for Mansion Park for SQL version starting 2005 to 2006. And uh, there is a new Mansion Park for uh, versions uh, uh, of SQL 2017 and upper versions. So going forward, there will be only one version agnostic Mansion Park that support, uh, supports uh, SQL Server 2017 and upper versions. Uh, this mention pack has the uh, same out-of-the-box experience as uh, uh, all the SQL Server MP. So you import mention pack and it will just work as usual and discover and monitor your instances automatically if you have agent on the box and proper RNS uh, account, but uh, it has dedicated presentation. It has its own uh, set of views and folders and it has uh, uh, its own uh, summary dashboard. Uh, the difference uh, is that uh, this mention pack supports uh, agent-less monitoring model that was designed for SQL Server instances on Linux, but it also works for Windows deployments as well. Uh, 
uh, on this environment I have a few SQL Server 2017 instances and uh, some of them uh, deployed on uh, Windows and uh, I have uh, one uh, instance that is actually uh, deployed on Linux box. So uh, uh, the REST capabilities are the same. So you have all the same set of metrics and uh, monitors, and you can drill down to understand what's going on with your database uh, for Linux boxes as well. And uh, uh, but the interesting that uh, you do not have agent on this box, uh, so all monitoring is uh, performed agentless. Uh, so it m might be useful for uh, Windows deployments uh, also in case if you have a highly loaded uh, OTP workload and it might be not possible to deploy SCOM agent on a box because um, you, you SCOM agent will run multiple mention packs and they may affect performance of your production server. And uh, before it was not possible to monitor uh, with SCOM such installations, but now you can do it uh, without agent. Let me show you configuration experience really quick. So. Uh, uh, first thing you need to do is to run uh, add monitoring wizard and specify some uh, name. Uh, select Microsoft SQL Server uh, 2017 plus template, of, of course, and then specify name and select manage pack to keep your override settings. And then uh, you need add instances. So <coughs> here uh, you have for uh, uh, this box and you can place as many connection strings as you want and if connection string contain um, a credential uh, credentials uh, it will parse it and generate RNS profile or you can uh, select some pre-created RNS profile for your SQL instance and as you may notice uh, you have option to use SQL credentials or Windows AD credentials so if you uh, want you may use just SQL credentials and uh, forget about all complexity with Windows uh, credentials configuration. Uh, I'm going to click cancel right now because uh, here's a uh, template that I uh, configured before and this is exactly my SQL uh, uh, instance uh, located uh, on Linux box. Uh, so uh, that's all about this demo. My next demo is about Azure SQL uh, database management pack. Uh, again, I'm going to skip uh, Manager Pack import uh, part. Uh, this Manager Pack is already deployed on this environment. And uh, this Manager Pack has out of the box experience with automatic discovery and monitoring. Uh, but to enable it, you need uh, to add your Azure subscription first. Uh, let me show you your uh, configuration steps. So uh, first thing to do is to run add monitoring uh, wizard and select uh, Azure SQL database monitoring. Then uh, place name and select manage pack to store your configuration. Uh, and on this step, uh, there are two options uh, for authentication and uh, you can use uh, SQL Server credentials or use uh, Azure Active Directory Service Principal account. I recommend you use first option with SPN because it's uh, free uh, and uh, uh, you will get uh, more data and more monitoring scenarios from uh, Azure IRM API uh, comparing to what available with uh, T-Scale. Uh, if you select SQL credentials, all traffic will be uh, charged to you. Uh, also, um, uh, SQL credentials have uh, limited functionality. There will be no elastic pool monitoring and no geo-replication monitoring. On the next step, uh, you can change endpoints and it might be required if you use Chinese subscription or Azure government subscription, uh, which has uh, different endpoints. On the next step, uh, 
uh, you have a few options you can enter uh, SPN manually if you already have it or you can uh, create it automatically so to do it uh, and it's one time operation you need to specify uh, your user credentials and this account uh, should be admin on your Azure subscription Okay, and we're almost done. So as I mentioned before, it's one-time operation and uh, it's a good idea to uh, save application ID and client secret, especially client secret, because it's uh, only one time when you could see it. Uh, after that, uh, management pack will generate RANES profile, uh, uh, RANES account, uh, and it will persist application ID and client secret. Uh, Manage pack will not store your uh, user uh, account information uh, in Manage pack. Instead, it will uh, use this uh, service principal account. By the way, uh, SPN is a special type of account in Azure Active Directory that allows uh, programmatical Azure API access, and all monitoring will be performed uh, using these credentials. On the next step. Uh, uh, you have uh, to select uh, Azure subscriptions that you want to add to monitoring and uh, in case if you have multiple subscriptions you can select them uh, all and add to monitoring uh, simultaneously. Uh, after um, uh, uh, creating role assignments uh, you have uh, uh, next two pages uh, where you could uh, specify uh, exclude list for servers and database. If you do not want to monitor, for example, your dev instances or some uh, database uh, um, you don't want to monitor it, it's a good idea to implement proper naming convention uh, so you can easily filter out uh, them here. For example, development, staging, and production. Uh, so you may want to focus on production uh, and do not monitor uh, other. So very last step is to select a uh, management pool that will run all the monitoring. So I'm going to click cancel uh, because I already have uh, environment pre-configured and there are two uh, templates that I have. So uh, after uh, initial uh, discovery is completed, you may find uh, all your uh, Azure SQL database instances in Azure SQL database folder under Microsoft SQL Server. And uh, uh, this is my server's state, uh, and this is my uh, Azure uh, databases. I also have uh, uh, separate views for elastic pool state and geo replication. So this mention pack uh, supports monitoring of uh, geo replication and elastic pool uh, if you use service principle credentials. Again, uh, this management pack is also focused on operational scenarios like uh, uh, DTU limit, like CPU, memory, and other. So let's see what is available. By the way, it also has a summary dashboard. Uh, so you can uh, drill down and see what's going on with your instances and uh, related objects. On each level, there are a uh, number of uh, uh, metrics and monitors. So let me open Health Explorer and see what is available. So on instance level, uh, uh, we have a uh, uh, server connection, server health state, and a number of uh, performance metrics like uh, uh, DTU, uh, elastic pool, and a uh, number of uh, databases. And it will alert if you're approaching the limit. And on database uh, level, uh, uh, also uh, database availability 
uh, geo replication, health uh, state, and uh, other performance aspects. So, <coughs> like there are about 20 metrics like CPU, DTU, log IO uh, sessions, and not all of them enabled. So, if you want to monitor uh, something that is not available out of the book, so you can uh, easily enable it. In total, uh, this measure pack has uh, more than 20 uh, performance metrics, and each metric has a uh, corresponding monitor. Uh, besides that, this measure pack has also a number of other uh, presentation, uh, uh, other uh, views and folders. Uh, so you can use to view performance data, or you can see a structure of your instances. Okay, and I, I believe that's all. Uh, the remaining experience is the same. Uh, let's summarize scenarios and experience uh, from demos you've just uh, I've just showed you uh, with SCOM. Uh, so we have truly integrated monitored experience for your data center. Uh, it's important that you can see all your SQL deployments, including cloud, Linux, and on-premises instances in a single place. Uh, it's pretty powerful and customizable, and you can extend it. Uh, it's free if you have a SCOM license, and actually all mention packs are free for download. All you need to do is uh, to import a uh, corresponding SQL mention pack, and uh, it's very easy to enable this monitoring. It's pretty straightforward. Import mention pack, uh, complete configuration steps like uh, run as or add a subscription. Mostly, uh, it will work out of the box uh, with minimal configuration steps, like I showed. Uh, when you should use this option? Mostly, you should go with this option if you already have SCOM or your data center is on-premise or hybrid. It's really powerful and flexible option to monitor SQL Server. My next demo is about SQL assessment solution in Log Analytics. The difference between Log Analytics and uh, Azure Monitor is that uh, Log Analytics uh, uh, provide you uh, solutions. So you have something that you can take and uh, start using. And one of uh, such solutions is SQL Assessment that is designed to uh, conduct uh, assessment of your on-premise SQL instances. You can find uh, this solution in uh, management solutions uh, in uh, Azure Monitor, in uh, Solutions Gallery. So you need to uh, just click Add and uh, find uh, SQL Assessment Management Solution. And after that, you will see SQL Health Check tile, but uh, uh, out of the box, uh, it will not work. So, as I said, it's designed to monitor your on-premise SQL instances. So, to actually enable monitoring, uh, you have two options. Uh, first option is to deploy standalone uh, uh, log analytics agent. Let me show you how to enable it. So, in advanced settings, you have uh, connected sources, and here you have. Uh, uh, option to uh, download and uh, install uh, Windows uh, agent. Uh, it will be the same uh, Microsoft monitoring agent that uh, used by SCOM to monitor uh, everything. And uh, you can just uh, download it, deploy, and um, provide workspace ID and uh, key. And it will connect to uh, your uh, log analytics solution. Or you have uh, another option to connect uh, your SCOM management group. This is what I did. So I connected my SCOM management group to Log Analytics. Uh, so it's uh, uh, fairly simple. So in Operation Measure Suite, uh, you have uh, connections. And here you have a uh, link, enable uh, connection to Log Analytics. And it's important to remember that you can connect uh, as many uh, SCOM management groups to a single log analytics uh, workspace, but you cannot uh, connect uh, uh, one SCOM to multiple log analytics. So it will send data to only one log analytics. 
workspace. And the second step you need to do uh, is to actually add uh, computers that you want to manage uh, with OMS. After that, uh, uh, solution uh, that you enable it on a portal, uh, start distributing to agent and start uh, collecting some health uh, information. So here I have uh, a SQL health check and I have uh, 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 11 uh, SQL uh, servers assessed in uh, past uh, 21 days and uh, as you could see this solution is uh, designed to uh, implement security and compliance, availability, uh, performance, uh, upgrade and other uh, checks. So it's focused not on operational scenarios but rather on configuration checks. And if you drill down, uh, you will see uh, knowledge. So what? Uh, uh, so all issues will be sorted by priority, and it's rather easy to understand what is high priority. And you will see a uh, recommendation how to resolve it, how to resolve the issue. Okay, and uh, it's pretty much about this demo. So let's summarize, uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, this solution is focused on assessment of your on-premise SQL server, and uh, it will not work for your Azure SQL database. It's very easy to deploy, and <coughs> what is important, it could be completely free for small deployments, and um, it runs check runs per seven days, and it generates mm, like megabytes of traffic, and with <coughs> A new uh, free tier uh, for log analytics. You have uh, five gigabytes per month uh, for free. So I highly recommend uh, you to deploy this solution in addition to SQL Server Management Pack. And all together, it works just great, and it will be free for you. And it's uh, very easy to enable, so you can. <coughs> just uh, uh, go and deploy agent or connect your SCO management group and uh, uh, deploy management solution and you are done. And <coughs> uh, data will be persisted by default for 31 days. So it's more than enough and it's like a number one solution that I usually recommend to start with log analytics because it will be completely free for you with uh, some uh, reasonable uh, um, environment size. Let's say, like, uh, if you have uh, 10 or up to 50 uh, SQL instances, it will be free and you easily fit free tier. Yeah, and anyway, even if you have more, it doesn't mean that you will start paying for that. So the uh, free, free, free tier is, uh, is just uh, cutting the, uh, any data that exceed the um, that free limit, so uh, it does mean that you uh, suddenly uh, may uh, may start paying for for the free service. So if you decide that are we just here to try and to use uh, some services for uh, assessment of monitor our SQL databases, this uh, so you you can be sure that you will not start paying until you decide. Okay, so I. Uh, I definitely need to take more of these services and move to the uh, paid uh, version of the subscription. My next demo is about SQL Analytics solution, and the first step uh, to enable it is the same as uh, for uh, SQL uh, assessment solution. So you should find it in a gallery and uh, add. And you will see uh, Azure SQL Analytics uh, preview solution uh, tile right here. Um, this solution is still in preview, but it's uh, dealt actively by uh, SQL team and uh, keep updating. Uh, so, uh, but this is not enough to enable uh, this solution. You have to do one more uh, operation. Uh, in a database, um, in diagnostic settings, um, it is necessary to uh, enable uh, turn on diagnostic uh, to collect uh, data and uh, send it to uh, log analytics. So I need to select all the uh, metrics and logs I want to 
uh, send to log analytics and select uh, send to log analytics. So here I will select my uh, workspace and I also uh, should uh, specify some name. After you enable uh, diagnostic settings, uh, uh, data uh, will flow to uh, log analytics and in Azure monitor, in log analytics, you will see a number of uh, uh, logs collected, like, uh, for example, Azure metrics. So you can see that this is database and uh, uh, this is a CPU percent metric. Uh, in solution itself, uh, you also will see a um, number of uh, uh, databases and how many elastic pools you have. So if you want to understand what's going on, you may drill down in the solution and see list of databases uh, and uh, uh, query duration, weights, timeouts, errors, and you can drill down to the next level. So there are uh, several levels of uh, details you can get for this solution. And uh, finally, uh, by making few drill down steps, you may find that out that this solution uh, not only monitors uh, instances, elastic pools and databases, it's focused on uh, performance aspects of individual queries. So I can drill down to the next level and uh, see individual query performance. So I can see query text, I can see uh, duration, weights, uh, CPU, I.O., and other useful information. And if I try to drill down to the next level, uh, it will redirect me to log search and uh, show me query which is behind this style. Uh, all uh, information that you can see in all log analytics solutions is based on these KKL queries. And what you can do, <coughs> uh, you can go to advanced ana analytics portal and uh, you'll see here all the data that is collected by log analytics on the left hand side, all the logs you have. And you can uh, easily uh, uh, create your queries and uh, experiment with uh, queries. And uh, uh, also from this place you can uh, pin a uh, query to uh, some dashboard and um, finally if you save query you can add uh, alert on top so uh, I have uh, one uh, alert rule uh, created based on custom uh, uh, query so this uh, alert rule will uh, send me Mm, alert in case if uh, there is a wait and uh, I have uh, um, filtered results by total and I also have a threshold that uh, uh, send alerts if number of results greater than one so it also uh, allows you to configure period and minutes and frequency and <coughs> it will uh, alert uh, and you can uh, it's pretty flexible and you can uh, also uh, build any query you want. You also can uh, not only pin individual queries, you can pin the whole solution to the Azure dashboard. So you can <coughs> have uh, it right here. And then again, you have all the drill down capabilities. That's all about this demo. And I just want to quickly summarize what uh, we just see. So. This solution is uh, also focused on uh, operations monitoring uh, scenarios. Right now it's uh, implemented only for Azure SQL database and uh, there is no such experience for Azure SQL DW or uh, analytic services. Um, it's solution itself is free, but uh, you need to remember about uh, data. Because uh, with uh, log analytics, you will uh, pay for data and for large uh, scale for the highly loaded uh, environments. Uh, it's really important to uh, properly select which data you send to log analytics and how long you store it. 
and it's very easy to enable it and I highly recommend it to start with this solution as well if you use uh, Azure SQL DB. Uh, at the moment uh, this solution is still in the open and it's functionally limited to uh, just a few scenarios but you can see that it, again it, it allows you to uh, uh, view individual query performance which is uh, highly important. And uh, I highly recommend uh, use this solution for Azure SQL DB because it's native to Azure platform. So next uh, demo is about BP check, uh, also known as best practice check tool. And it's a SQL Server Management Studio. Literally, it's just a, a bunch of uh, SQL scripts, actually one huge SQL script that's published on a GitHub and uh, built by uh, Pedro Lopez from uh, Tiger team. Uh, it uh, supports SQL Server versions starting 2005 and upper versions, and we designed it only for on-premise uh, SQL. Uh, it will not work with your Azure uh, SQL database or managed instance. It has hundreds of checks starting from configuration and uh, completing by uh, performance and individual queries performance. Um, it's really slow, so when you uh, execute it, it may take uh, hours to execute it. Uh, so you, uh, you know, it's more like a tool for DBA. So here I have a uh, sample run, and I uh, can see that uh, there is a information, a lot of information selected. And it's not only about, uh, you know, configuration uh, collection, but it also it has uh, some uh, health check embedded. And uh, in this tool, it's called deviation. And if deviation is fine, let's say memory, then I'm good. If something is grown, uh, I can see that uh, uh, something is not running. For example, here I have a, uh, I have a issue with disk fragmentation. So this tool uh, helps me to understand what's going on with my uh, services. Let's say uh, I can see from this check that a uh, service is not running. So it's more like a collection of uh, SQL scripts that you can uh, use with any uh, on-premise SQL uh, instance. And it's completely free, so just go today and download from GitHub and start using. Um, at the same time, this tool explores uh, decent capabilities uh, in terms of integration. So you can build uh, uh, on top uh, some automatic uh, jobs that will uh, implement these checks periodically, and you can uh, send data from it to log analytics or uh, other locations and automate uh, this process. Right now, uh, there is nothing available uh, for this tool in terms of integration, but the good thing about this tool is that it's updated uh, very frequently. Uh, last time I uh, worked with uh, Pedro and I found that uh, SQL 2070 is not, is not working, and after I reported this issue, it was fixed like within a couple of days. So if you want to have some feature, please send uh, feedback to my friend Pedro Lopez, and he will uh, address this issue. So it's completely free, and it's more comfortable for DBAs, and it's really good for assessments, not for uh, real-time monitoring, because execution may take a long time. It has uh, limited functionality, and uh, you need to uh, put your hands to make it work on uh, large enterprise scales. Uh, you need to automate it. Um, it's really good when all your other tools are dead, and uh, or you when you have uh, small environments uh, or you want uh, completely free monitoring. Anyway, I highly recommend you to try it out uh, at least for um, you know diagnostics 
because it provides so uh, many uh, useful uh, information and um, configuration and performance checks. Yeah, but we encourage you uh, to double check. So before running this uh, tool on your production environment, run it on your staging environment and evaluate the performance in part. Uh, because, for example, comparing to the management parts for System Center Operations Manager, where uh, uh, there is a commitment to uh, avoid excessive usage of resources for monitoring purpose. So it will be really, uh, really weird if the monitoring tool will cause performance degradation uh, or for the for the database. So for the uh, for, for those uh, this script, as Alex mentioned, the execution may take pretty long time. As I understand, we are talking even about hours if we decide, for example, to run it all uh, on pretty big environment. Uh, so we encourage you to first evaluate how it may impact the performance of your infrastructure before running those scripts uh, over the business hours on your uh, performance or on, on, on your production environment. And as Alex mentioned, it's like a backup, mostly a backup option to use. Uh, before we move to the questions uh, for this webinar, yes, we're done with the, with the main content. Uh, let me remind you about ourselves, about me, Alex, and Vicod Consultant. Vicod Consulting uh, is, a, is a company who is providing IT management and DevOps services for years on the market. And right now, we are focused on cloud DevOps and automation services that include users, usage statistics collection, uh, performance and failure monitoring, data processing and visualization, deployment automation, security, cost management, and many other services that are right now considered as a DevOps, as a cloud DevOps. We also provide IT outsourcing and team augmentation services, and of course, custom monitoring solutions for system center operations manager and Azure management services is still in our focus. So if you uh, have any questions about monitoring of your infrastructure with Azure Management Service, with Azure Monitor, Azure Application Insights, Azure Log Analytics, or with a System Center Operations Manager, we are very uh, happy to help you with that. Please send your questions and uh, and needs to uh, lsdevops at vico.com and visit our new website, azure.do. Do stands for DevOps. And uh, right now we are moving on to questions. So we received several very interesting questions, and I'd like to start with, uh, uh, yeah, with a, with a very interesting question about uh, about security configuration. Because when Alex uh, uh, demonstrated the SQL Server management part and uh, spoke about how easy to configure that, I always uh, had this in mind, like, like what about runner's account? It's for complicated environment, configuring of low privilege runner's profiles might be really complicated. So I can see a question from Jeremy uh, that uh, it's about Kevin Holman's uh, SQL management pack that allows to, uh, allows to make it easier, to make this process easier. Uh, it's a SQL Server runner's addendum management pack. And the question is: Is it still compatible with the most newest version, uh, most recent version of the SQL Server Management Pack? Alex, first of all, when do uh, when did we have the most recent release of the SQL Server Management Pack? Uh, a couple of months ago. Yeah, and uh, we uh, we haven't changed that uh, runner security configuration. So because uh, Kevin's uh, Kevin's management pack is wor is working with this part, I don't think that. There any uh, compatibility issues, Alex? Yeah. Uh, what is more important uh, from my perspective? So Kevin uh, making great uh, work, and he's always uh, um, helping uh, community with uh, run as profiles configuration. The good news that uh, SQL Server 2017 management pack uh, in a local monitoring configuration, the classic one that is out of the box. Uh, seed accounts will work. So you can easily use uh, Kevin's recommendations uh, to uh, basically uh, 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 create a, a seed account and grant permissions, and you are done with uh, all configuration. Uh, because uh, it's issue number one for SQL management park, uh, how to configure it with a low privilege. It's complex, 
but now with uh, seed accounts and uh, with local monitoring, it's supported for all the version of the management pack and for SQL Server uh, 2017 management pack as well. With uh, agentless configuration, uh, it's also simplified because now you can uh, just create SQL credentials on your Windows or Linux book and start monitoring. It's also native for DBAs. Uh, and you have no uh, it's a headache with uh, uh, Windows uh, security configurations like it was before. So now you have two options. So you can use Kevin recommendation with seed account, or you can use agentless monitoring with uh, uh, TCO account. I hope this answers uh, your question. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Uh, the next question uh, is about uh, comparing of the mature tools that we showed today, SCORM, Azure Monitor, and Log Analytics. Uh, so because uh, like many SCORM users, they, they know about some latency uh, that they experience with the monitor infrastructure with, uh, for example, with a SCORM, so it may take some time to, 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 for example, to receive alerts about some issue. So if we compare uh, for example, monitoring using SCORM, Azure Monitor, and using Log Analytics. Uh, so, what, what, uh, what, Alex, uh, you can t you can tell us about difference in the latency uh, when we can expect the notification about some issue? Yeah, it's a good question, and uh, uh, my team did an investigation just recently because with every uh, update to Azure Monitor and to Azure itself, uh, it's really interesting how it uh, changes. So as I said, uh, uh, Azure Monitor is not equal for every uh, resource. For some uh, resources like Azure SQL Database, you can have only classic alert. And for classic alert, uh, we have a life in say, about 23 minutes. So uh, comparing to SCOM, uh, which uh, has, uh, you know, uh, for, uh, for example, for DB Engine, you can uh, get alerts with one minute. Uh, for performance-based metrics, you usually get it like a uh, pair of 15 minutes or half hour. Uh, it's, it looks pretty comparable. Uh, so if you are um, asking me which is faster, uh, Azure is a bit faster, but not dramatically faster. Uh, we have a different picture when we uh, try uh, new alerts, non-classic alerts. Non-classic alerts for virtual machines uh, works uh, much faster, and uh, uh, faster you can get. It's like eight minutes, but uh, again, it's not a real uh, life scenario. When you set uh, one minute interval for alert, uh, alert will be raised uh, after you get one sample uh, after eight minutes. But uh, in real life, you won't uh, avoid uh, noise, and you will do not one sample. Let's say I want to alert if uh, five times, five minutes, uh, my uh, uh, virtual machines is under pressure. So. Again, uh, the reasonable uh, alert time for new non-classic alerts would be around uh, 15 minutes, which is also uh, fast, but uh, uh, not dramatically fast compared to SCOM. And in some cases, uh, if you uh, notice, you may create uh, alert in uh, Azure Monitor based on uh, metrics, or you can create alert on top of log analytics. The interesting difference between uh, Azure Monitor and log analytics is that uh, in some cases log analytics may be faster. So we get a real result for Azure SQL uh, uh, analytics, um, which is analysis service in the cloud. Uh, so log analytics was alerting within 23 minutes and uh, Azure Monitor uh, non-classic was alerting within uh, 24 minutes. So it's, uh, uh, we can say that there is no single uh, result, and for each type of resource, you have different types of alerts available, classic and non-classic, and <clears throat> depending on what you are using, you may get different performance. So think about range from eight to half hour, which is, looks uh, comparable to SCOM performance. Yeah, and as I understand, uh, actually with a SCOM, you have a, you have capability to tweak it and make it like make this experience like completely on steroids. So you can 
sacrificed by uh, like overusing of the uh, resources on management server and maybe on agents and make Scrum act like crazy and, for example, you know, collect all the information really literally every minute so you will receive alert like in, in two minutes, for example, after uh, after uh, it's, it, it, it's diagnosed. Of course, uh, when you are using the cloud solution, you don't have uh, those capabilities, so it's certain that, uh, of course, when, uh, area where SCOM is more customizable. But as I said, it's uh, not like everyday scenario, so usually SCOM uh, infrastructure can survive working, uh, uh, as I said, like almost on steroids. It just will, will consume too much resources. And we are uh, running a bit out of time for our uh, presentation today. So I have the last question in our list that we want to answer before we uh, say thank you and goodbye. So this question is from Alex. Uh, and this is about, is it possible to create a custom uh, SQL query monitor in Azure, in Azure Monitor or in Azure Anal Analysis Service, or oh, sorry, about uh, Azure Log Analytics? Yeah, uh, so uh, the way I could uh, recommend you uh, is uh, uh, create uh, your uh, extensions via uh, Log Analytics HTTP Data Collector API to uh, make uh, this uh, custom uh, SQL query. Uh, so f first of all, you cannot uh, create uh, custom SQL query monitors in Azure Monitor or Log Analytics. So to do it, you need uh, um, dedicated uh, machine that will uh, run your PowerShell script uh, or your SQL query or whatever, and uh, it will uh, create a JSON payload and submit it to uh, uh, Log Analytics HTTP Data Collector API. Uh, I think, we, uh, so practically speaking, you don't even need a dedicated machine, so you can use serverless compute capabilities of Azure, like Azure Functions, or run the Azure Automation Scenario to execute this, uh, for example, this custom SQL query, and, for, and uh, yeah, as I yeah. mentioned, very good scenario, create a JSON payload and just send it to Log Analytics, so you will have all the monitoring information in one place. Yeah, so to, so to extend uh, your monitoring with your custom SQL query, you need some worker, and it could be a uh, virtual machine that runs uh, uh, your script and uh, forms a JSON payload and uh, submit it to uh, Log Analytics, or it could be uh, something else, like uh, serverless, uh, Azure Function, for example. Okay, I hope. That yeah, that's all, that's, that's all for questions for today. If we uh, find any other outstanding questions, we will uh, we will be glad to share the answers, uh, like the, of course the questions and answers with you after this webinar. Right now, uh, let me say thank you all. Thank you all for joining us today for this uh, SQL database monitoring web webinar. I and Alex were very grateful uh, for you uh, to you. And uh, as I mentioned before, even if someone couldn't join us today this time, because we could see uh, people registered from different time zones from around the world. And uh, so we will uh, make sure that the slides of this webinar, as well as video recording of this webinar and answers to the questions will be available for everyone uh, registered to uh, this webinar. Please uh, stay tuned for the updates from us Follow us on Twitter and other social media and uh, check for the updates on our websites, viacode.com, our new website, Azure DevOps, Azure DO, and of course, uh, stay tuned for the updates on mpwiki.viacode.com. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Bye-bye.